Hey, buddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Japan. To start with, we're going to go ahead and get to work on the Ancestral Hall. I think we have enough military to make the Ottomans go away, and I think there's plenty of land in here, even if the land is totally garbage, to make something meaningful happen out here. Now, this settler, I really don't want to settle here, but I don't really have a choice based on the terrain. There's not really very good terrain. I mean, I guess I like I guess I could settle coastally. We, we kind of considered that if I settle coastally, I would get a better harbor and not have to build the aqueduct. I, I guess that's technically better. So I, so I will settle coastally here. That's fine. And now because I have filled my terrain with these delicious, delicious archer units. These guys are in a bit of a deadlock. They're trying to shoot my city, but they actually can't get there. So they just don't know what to do, which I'm going to use to my advantage because why wouldn't I? And I'm going to use that to my advantage to try and just clear out a little bit of these units. So I'll get rid of this guy. Oh, I was hoping that would be a kill. It was not a kill, but you know, not the end of the world. Have a little scout out there. Nothing new to be seen. And we can pop on and get this city settled. Not a very good city, not until we get harbors online. Uh, we are, of course, going to need those, so I may as well get them researching. Normally, I would like to delay that or skip it entirely, but I do have maybe four or five cities, maybe six, depending on how I settle, that are going to want a harbor. Yokohama, on the other hand, it's just a really bad city. It's going to need all the help it can get. I'm going to just go straight for a granary to try and get the population rolling in here, and maybe that'll have some results for me. We'll start chipping away at some of these units. Pull back my warriors to heal and all that jazz and try to slowly but surely strip away the final units in here. I just really hope he doesn't get that pillage. I'll actually be pretty upset if he gets that pillage, uh, in all honesty. If he pillages... Okay, no, he's trying to run away, which is really good. And we did un unlock our theater squares now, which is also really good. I can get a friendship with Gorgo, which, I, like, obviously I will take that. I'll, I'll even send them a delegation Try to keep them on my good side. I, th I hope that they're just causing problems for the Ottomans down here. Because now I can take my time, build up my civilization a little bit. I don't actually need the settler policy right now. But I don't have a use for any other policy. It's very, very upsetting. Wait, I, oh, I, I did get a religion. Okay. I, I, for, for, for a second there, I thought I didn't get a religion. Now the question is, should I spread my religion? And I think the answer is yes. I think I should definitely come in here. I might just wait for a dark age before I spread my religion. I think that actually makes more sense. So we're just going to hold off, wait for a dark age. Now, we have drama and poetry unlocked. We would like to get over to humanism relatively quickly. We'd also like to get the monarchy. And we also want to get the feudalism. So there's a few key technologies that we kind of want to bounce around the tech tree a little bit. So I think I'm going to go for theology into feudalism into monarchy. That's kind of like the pathway that I'm going to take. But we'll go for theology first. Because that opens up the temple option, which means I can, if I want to, sort of advance my religion. I can also get swordsmen now if I need them. I don't need them, so I would rather sell my iron. Because that's worth more in terms of value. But if any more units come for me, maybe I'll do that. I could, I could also upgrade and go for the attack on the Ottomans. Like, if I were to capture one or two of their cities, that could really change the game for me. Now, the real question is here. Do I get a builder to improve these horse tiles and all that sort of jazz? Or do I go ahead... Well, really what I should do, I, I should have sold them my resources, but they have no gold now, so that doesn't really matter. Um, I could go for a granary. The city already has fresh water, so it's good for a little while. I could get the, the earlier I get these theater squares, the better. So I feel like if I come in here, there is Greece. Greece has already started earning great rider points. That means I just cannot afford to delay my, um, my thingies. I would like to purchase a builder, I think. It would get me these two horse tiles. That would give me access to the strategic resource that I can sell to the AI. I'm going to go ahead and find Gilgamesh. Uh, he already has enough iron. What about you? You don't have any iron. So you will, of course, pay me the full complement for 20 gold. It's five gold per turn, which is 150 gold over 30 turns, which is a pretty respectable amount of gold considering it's turn 75 and my current gold income was 12 before I made that deal. So I'm pretty happy about that. Shizuoka is a little bit of a problem because I also need to buy a tile and get to work on my theater squares. And, you know, it's, it's just a hard old decision to make, but I am going to get to work on the theater square. Yeah, the theater squares are just so important this early into the game. And I'll pump out settlers out of Kyoto. If I can get these online in a relatively short amount of time, it'll it'll kind of pay me dividends because I'll start earning great rider points and all that jazz. And we'll uh, be doing much, much, much better. I was kind of hoping to chop out some, build, some settlers, but I really didn't hit 
any good choppable tiles of this game uh, in any sort of respect. I, I hit a couple of choppable tiles and I have taken advantage of them, but nowhere near the kind of level of chopping that I would like to see in a game, ideally. Now, Nagoya. Nagoya, 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 Nagoya. This city would like to build some districts. I don't really have a good spot for my theater square or my uh, stuff like that. But what I might do is I might purchase here because this will eventually get filled in with districts, right? And this will provide just even more adjacency. So theater squares, theater squares. That is what we're focusing on. I'll put one point in G into Geneva to get the plus two science because Gorgo is suzerain. I will get that plus two science. And that's a significant amount of science to get this early into the game. Things are coming along nicely. There's the horses online. I might give both copies of the horses to this city. Although, hmm. I'm kind of tempted to give both to Fukuoka, Fukuoka because the city would be able to do a lot with that. Whereas Shizuoka kind of doesn't really have good tiles to work. It has its monument, so it will expand relatively quickly. So a builder would make sense to help out in here as well. Now, the Ottomans want peace. I'm going to go ahead and refuse that for now. And uh, I'll do it on my own turns to see just how much stuff they'll give me. There'll be five gold per turn plus that. Is there anything else I want to take off them? I don't want to take any. I'm just going to take the gold. I'm going to take the piece. That gives me 10 turns to kind of just sit on my laurels and do whatever I want and not have to worry about things. Now, I would like to trade with Geneva again because that's six gold and plus one science, which is a significant amount of gold and science at this stage of the game for me. So it seems like a pretty reasonable trade deal. deal. Even though I would like to get roads up and stuff like that, it's just not going to work for me at this point in time. I'm going to send one of my archers up to the north just to scout this out so the barbarian encampments don't appear. I'm also going to send an archer out over here to the east. Now that I'm not at war, I can be a little bit more sort of free with my units. Now, I think I'm going to get that iron online as well. That uh, represents production and science, which is very, very valuable. All right, we got a major flood over in this city, which is a little bit unfortunate. We also have access to theology. And now we can get, get to work on feudalism to start getting extra builder charges. We also have two envoys here. I don't have any campuses, so there's no point putting things in there. I should also get my hands on some scouts to go scouting. We're about to finish the Ancestral Hall, where we can start building some more settlers. Pop up onto the hill to get some scouting information. Very, very big desert that is not very useful, but we might be able to do something with that desert. All right, there is Celestial Navigation. I can get my trade routes when and if I need them. I would like to pick up Apprenticeship now. I have a lot of mines so far this early into the game. I have one, two, three three mines and I pot potentially a lot more room for mines as well. Uh, I would really like a builder to chop these two tiles to get my settler faster. I don't have the builder card plugged in however so I'd be spending 62 production to get quite a bit of chop here. I'd also be able to chop the stone if I have masonry. I don't have masonry so I'll pick up masonry. I can chop the stone. If I get that builder I'd be able to do a significant amount of chops and get a lot of settlers really quickly. So even though this will technically slow down my first settler, every settler that comes after that will be sped up. So I think it's a worthwhile investment of my time and resources. The one good thing about this desert is that there's at least a few tiles that can be used for seaside resorts. Actually, I take that back. There's literally two tiles and these are probably not going to be seaside resortable. Unless I get my hands on the Eiffel Tower. Talking about current plans, we did get a Dark Age, but that was intentional because now we can use Exodus of the Evangelists to get plus two error score every time we spread our religion. We'll get ourselves a couple of missionaries, spread our religion to all of our cities because our religion still has not yet spread and then we can spread it start spreading it down to greece as well this is uh, basically a whole bunch of error score that we saved by waiting on spreading our religion might not guarantee us a golden age but it will definitely make it a little bit easier you can almost always win this by voting twice for yourself it's very rare that i don't win this if i vote for myself twice so that's a free trade route which is pretty nice at least for 30 turns which is pretty valuable uh in terms of this I'm going to go ahead and vote for myself as well. I don't think you usually win that one. Yeah, so I voted for myself twice and I won this trade policy because the AI tends to be uh, either voting for themselves or for whoever their friend is. And it looks like everyone has voted for me. Let's go ahead and get that trader, although I'd like to purchase it because it's a good investment. Let's start converting our cities. There's plus two era score. We'll grab another two up here and I'll grab myself one more missionary to spread my religion around finished the theater square in nagoya so we have to make some decisions about what exactly we're going to do in here i could go for an, the amphitheater here it's a lot of production it's a lot of culture and great rider points over the course of the game so any delay on this is really really bad i could also go for the trade route the growth and the production that comes from the harbor 
I think I'm going to rush down my culture here this game because I am playing against Greece and so I need to get ahead of them as soon as possible and any delay is basically giving them time to make the game harder for me. So whenever I have the option to go for theater squares or theater square buildings, I pretty much have to make that decision and then try to bridge the gap like in production in other ways by like using my goal to purchase builders, for example. I would like to pick up engineering, but I think apprenticeship at this point will make builders so much more valuable, especially once I have feudalism, because then I'll be pumping out five charge builders who add plus two production to, to hill tiles, which is a lot. Now, I did just say I want to go for amphitheaters, but I do need builders. So, man, it's, it's really hard to justify, especially when I'm making this much gold and I can just buy builders kind of when I need them. This city could definitely use a builder. There are at least two tiles that could be improved. This one and this one, although I'd have to spend gold to get both. But I'll get a builder next turn, although I really want that trade route. Hmm. I think I'm going to take the trade route, actually. The trade route represents... Uh, a huge opportunity for me to generate a lot of income over this era. So there's Shizuoka following crabs and kebabs. I probably should have called it crabs and kebabs. It's actually kebabs and gyros. <laughs> Trying to appeal to the Ottomans and the Greeks here. So uh, Sumeria is over here. This is a little bit of a problem. I could settle the incense and that is kind of the plan. We're going to come down here. We're going to start to work on settlers. So now we have 100% production towards settlers in a city that has basically no production at all. We're going to harvest this resource. Magnus is giving us a buff. Boom. And now we have a settler in two turns. Amphitheaters in Fukuoka as per usual. Now, the Islamic missionaries have started to appear. That's okay. The only th we, we actually don't care about like holding our religion. We're mainly using it to get a golden age. That's kind of like the, the main objective there. And it also provides us loyalty and other nice juicy things. And I, I might even go for a fourth missionary here, but I'm going to hold off on that. Now I could trade with myself here and pick up a lot of food and production. And I think internal trade routes, as good as these are, are the way to go here. It's going to grow my city significantly and also speed up the rate at which we get the amphitheater. Totally forgot to renew my friendship with Gilgamesh, so we went in here and we picked that up. Now, let's go ahead and see if Gorgo has acquired a source of iron. No, but she has used her iron, which means we can sell her some more and pick up another five gold per turn. I'm wondering if Suleiman, also, he would love to buy some of my iron. I'm gonna sell him a little bit of that. He only gave me 55 gold, which I don't mind, not getting the full price for that. And Gorgo might also wanna buy my horses because she has none. Here we go. Not quite as valuable, but still every little chunk of gold that I can get my hands on is a big win for my empire. Settler has popped out of Kyoto, and I think I'm going to go settle that incense first. I think that's going to be an important place to capture. I would like to get my temple online, especially because it gives food, but I really need the granary because that gives me housing, which will you know kind of make up for the fact that this gives me food. So let's get to work on another settler first and foremost, because we still have a couple of chops left available to us. We can get that settler in four turns and we can chop one more time in my capital. And then we'll need another builder to get these two mines improved so the capital is actually useful. And then maybe chop the stone here. Yokohama has finished its granary. Let's get to work on the monument. See if we can't convert Geneva. Geneva did not accept conversion because it needs a little bit more. I am going to need that fourth I'm going to need that fourth missionary, so I'll get that in a couple, in a turn. All right, beautiful. There's horseback riding. Not so important now because we're no longer under threat of being at war because we actually have a bigger military than most of the other players in the game. It kind of forced my hand there. We converted another city. We're up to 42 era score. Remember, these guys are really here just to generate era score for me. I'm not too worried about any other function that they have. I just want to use them to get era score. So I'm going to look for... Uh, Low, oh my god, another eruption here that added a ridiculous amount of yields. I feel like this should just be the thumbnail for every episode, and we just see how crazy the yields get on this. <laughs> if only, I don't think volcanoes can add uh, yields to coastal tiles or lake tiles, but if they could, it would be amazing. And we got another governor promotion. We're going to go ahead and plug this into Pingala. We're going to go for the researcher promotion first, because science is going to be our weakest thing. Actually, I got two. I guess I just forgot about my governor promotion. It's got a bit distracted, I think, with all the things that were going on. But now we are getting science and gold from Pingala at a rate of five from this city, which is really, really great because it's going to really help us catch up because we are a little bit behind in terms of the science and culture. Nothing too bad that we can't catch up from. I'm going to chop out this settler and then use the overflow production to get another builder to chop that stone for another settler. This settler, I would like to get up here somewhere. I would also like to get a settler down here, perhaps on this incense as well. In the meantime, 
Uh, maybe a settler over here would be good too, but I think I think I'm going to go settle that incense. I think that's the right move there. The nice thing about missionaries is they can walk through open borders with no problem, so you can actually use them to do a little bit of scouting. Something I really, really like to do with my missionaries. When I have them available to me, I don't always use them, but when they're around, it's a great use for them. Wow, we found the Great Barrier Reef. I kind of, wow, I feel like Greece spawned right next to the Great Barrier Reef. I spawned right next to Ayuyufukul. I'm just expecting someone has, like, started near some other ridiculous, like, wonder. Build it completed in here, get to work on the settler. Send this builder down here to do that, and this settler will make his way over to the incense. Now, I will be able to sell off the incense and stuff like that. Not in a huge rush to do that. I could sell off my oranges. Nobody has any money except for Greece, and I think Greece already has the oranges. So yeah, not really a valuable trade there. Uh, well, I guess I could give it to Gilgamesh. He has no money though, is a bit of a problem. Let's see, Greece. You might actually buy another 20, 20 iron from me for the full price. Uh, you have no gold per turn. So I guess I've bled you dry. And I've also bled the Ottomans dry. So that's all working out pretty well for me. I'm pretty happy with how this game has turned around so far. It was looking a bit ropey, a bit shaky uh, in the beginning, but now it's starting to look pretty okay. We're going to harvest here. That'll basically finish that settler. And so by using the combination of the government plaza building and a couple of builders, we've managed to get ourselves a full complement in settlers in only a handful of turns, comparative to how long it would have taken us to hard build those. So really, it's probably not the most efficient thing that you can do, but it kind of, you know, in the long run, it kind of turns out to be a reasonably good way to play the game. Now, she's heading up here to get this settler down. Thankfully, I'm faster than her. So I'll be able to get a settler down right here. This might bring us to odds with her. So I'm going to start moving a little bit of military down this way to start to protect. And then I'll have these other units defend my Eastern Empire. Go ahead and settle the incense. That's going to give me access to a resource that nobody else has. And hopefully I'll be able to sell it to people for a really nice amount of gold. 100 gold right there. Just for settling the city in place, I got 100 gold and a free builder. Now, granted, this city is basically useless, right? For the vast majority of the game, this city is going to do absolutely nothing for me. But it doesn't have to do anything. It exists as a buffer state. And it'll also be useful once I start packing in some of those trade routes and stuff like that. And it'll get a little bit of growth, right? It's not a completely useless, probably not the best investment I could have made, but I really don't have that much land and I should just get as many cities down as possible. I will look elsewhere in future just to get that diplomatic favor off him because diplomatic favor has value and you can sell it. I don't actually have any plan to keep my promises. Pop a mine down here in Kyoto to finally start building up the production of that city. And it's just in time too for us to pick up the apprenticeship uh, technology, which will of course give our mines plus one production, which is a very nice outcome. Oh my God, another mega colossal eruption. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Look at these tiles, dude. This is, this is outrageous. Uh, this, this should be illegal. Kyoto, final settler completed. We're going to go ahead and pop this settler down on this incense. And then we're also going to go ahead and retrade everyone to make sure we have open borders. Again, partially for the, you know, friendship improvement. And partially for the little bit of extra gold that you typically get when you make that kind of a deal. Aha, okay. He'll even give you a little bit of diplomatic favor, which I can then sell to someone else who might have more money. I'm also going to get open borders with the Ottomans even if he doesn't have any cash, and he'll give me two diplomatic favor for eight gold. That's actually a really good deal. How much do you sell this for? Six gold for... You actually... If I find an AI who values diplomatic favor highly, I could probably cost-effectively buy diplomatic favor from one player and sell it to the other. Now, my final settler, I would like to settle in around here. I don't know if that's going to be viable. I guess I could settle here, but this is basically just like an oasis city. It's not very good. Whereas this city up here might actually be useful. And then I have to make the hard decision between, am I going to go for another settler and settle down here? Or am I going to start building infrastructure? I think I'm going to go for one more settler. I have all the infrastructure in place for it and I get a free builder out of it. So technically the settler is only costing me 230 production and it'll give me another city that I can use as a buffer for loyalty, all that jazz. So I think it is worth it to do. Let's go ahead and get another city down. This is a game where I have really, really, really bad land. I'm going to go ahead and send a warrior down here to scout. Maybe there's a little bit of land I can snatch by sending more settlers down there. I doubt it, but maybe I'll send them uh, across the ocean and stuff like that. Now, 
I have 500 gold in the bank and that's a pretty big deal because we're about to finish apprenticeship and we do have a few mines around that we could improve. For example, I would like a builder in Shizuoka and I would like a builder in Fukuoka because there's a couple of tiles around here that I'd like to see improved. I am pretty close to feudalism, however, so I'm going to wait the four turns before I actually get those builders. Awesome, we got plus one error score from researching apprenticeship. We are very, very, very close to getting a golden age here, which would be great because it would allow us to convert our faith into builders or something to that effect. We've also converted another city. We're actually only five points away from a golden age. So if I were able to pick up divine right in a reasonable amount of turns, which I should be able to, since I am picking up uh, amphitheaters and stuff like that relatively quickly, as well as monuments, I'm, I'm thinking I might be in for a chance, especially since there's 27 to 47 turns left and we're only, you know, a couple of reasons researches away from getting this. In terms of our next technology that we're going to research, I would like to pick up construction just for the option to build lumber mills. And then really, I don't care about much that happens in the bottom half of the tech tree. I mean, I guess I kind of care about military engineering for NITER. Other than that, I don't really see anything useful. Printing is good to pick up when you actually have some great works of writing. I'd much rather go for mass production into industrialization, into radio, into flight and stuff like that. I am, of course, going to be buying tiles where, you know, where it makes sense, right? The city has really, really bad tiles. So you buy the horse tile, you improve it, and you've made this city go from being absolutely garbage to being slightly less garbage. I would like to put a farm triangle here eventually, but I think the primary thing is to get the mines online. Production tiles are so important to get online early, you have no idea. Housing tiles can wait a little bit because, you know, you're not under any major pressure to get housing tiles online. They're nice, but typically your bottleneck is going to be production because you're going to have more things to build than like, I, I, like more housing gives you more things to build, right? Because you can place more districts. But typically your problem is going to be that you have too, mo too many things to build and not enough production to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to convert Geneva. I might even get one more missionary, although I would like to save my faith for that uh, inevitable golden age that we are going to secure. Doing a little bit of scouting, and I found where the Ottoman's capital is. I would actually kind of like him to forward settle me in this desert, because it could open up options to go to war with him, uh, especially since we're pretty equal on tech and culture. So I might even consider doing a timing push. But the problem is, if I do a timing push, I would have to research something like bombards. So we'll kind of see how the game develops. It might be a direction we go. We can always we can always switch this over to a military game if we really, 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 really want to. Just researched feudalism, civic. Just researched the feudalism, civic, and grabbed ourselves a plus one era score and the ability to get plus two build charges when we build builders. So we're going to be popping that in over the caravan series. Yes, we do lose four gold from that. However, our builders are now worth a lot more. And so any builders that I get are going to be extremely valuable for me. And I'm kind of tempted, kind of tempted to move Pingala from this city. I'm going to go ahead and get the harbor nice and early here. This is a plus four harbor. However, this one works nicely with the aqueduct. So I'm going to place it there. I would like to get a trade route and I'd also like to maybe consider getting a trireme. In fact, I'm going to get a trireme or, or a galley, not a trireme. Sorry, I'm going to get a galley just so I can do a little bit of coastal exploration. It might be worth it to embark a settler at some point, And it's always good to just have that knowledge. It's five turns of production for a potential payoff. It is a little bit of a gamble. I will admit that but it's not a totally unwarranted gamble. Over in Yokohama, they definitely need a builder. I'm going to pop a builder down here, get these fish tiles online. That'll let the city grow a little bit, which is exactly, um, if your city does not have any production, but it does have like good housing and food tiles, get the housing and food tiles because population can sometimes kind of make up for a city if it has really bad production because each unit of population generates a little bit of science and culture. And also just by virtue of the fact that you can work so many tiles, you might actually end up with like the production to actually finish a district or two. Here we are. We pop down Oi Okayama and we get a free builder out of that. Now, this city has basically zero growth, which is a little bit of a problem, but we can get the granary to kind of help out with that. One thing we could do is purchase one of these Ayyufugul tiles. And I'll probably do that in both of these cities just to give them a tile that's worth working just for the early game. We'll consider getting the other ones in my capital. But for now, this is pretty reasonable. I don't think I'm ever going to improve these tiles because they're constantly just going to get like blasted over by this volcano. There we have it, 55 of the 56 
uh, error score that we need to get our golden age. So I, I would consider that essentially secured, right? We, we've got it in the bag and we've had it in the bag since we basically hit the dark age. So we are going to have a golden age next era. And we're going to want to think about what that means for us as a civilization and what we're going to do with that golden age. We've also just started finishing up things like our very first amphitheaters. So we're going to, have to start considering what we're going to do after these amphitheaters. Now, I was hoping to go for holy sites this game, and I still think it does make sense in the context of the game, especially since this is a plus four holy site. Like, that's pretty hard to pass up at this point. Yokohama is another one of these cities that's going to kind of struggle for things to build. So I might just go for trade routes up here to be able to generate a lot of gold. Uh, having these cities generate gold is probably more useful than anything else they could do. And it'll also give them a way to generate a lot of population, which kind of indirectly translates into other useful things. Oh, it looks like we managed to find Preslav, which is beautiful. I am going to put a point in that because that'll give me plus two production in my capital when we're building units. Would have been really nice to find them earlier to help boost how quickly we build our settlers. We didn't quite find them, which is totally fine. And we've got another amphitheater finished. So we'll go ahead and place another holy site. Now, were I a different kind of player, I would definitely consider working theater square projects to get my tourism ball rolling and i still am considering that especially since i'm pretty quick to the punch on the great rider points thing so i might actually do that but i'd like to get my holy sites up just just so i have a good faith gain potential secure for the late game especially since i have the potential for a golden age coming up or not a golden age sorry a heroic age in fact I, i'm almost guaranteed at this point right so we have a flatland stone, which would normally be a harvest for me. But this city has such bad tiles that this is just going to have to be a quarry and have to like the fact that it's a quarry. I really don't like putting quarries on flatland tiles, but I don't really have an option. There we go. We got our very first galley, which gave us another two error score. That's another way to get error score. If you were wondering, I always forget about that one, but it's a great way to get a little bit of extra era score. And we have our golden heroic age secured. Now we want to consider what's going to be our next kind of governor. We could, of course, promote Pingala with 100% great people points generated in the city. And I think that's a pretty reasonable one to get early in a culture game, especially if we're going to be plopping down a theater square after the settler, which, of course, we will be doing. And we're going to be reassigning Magnus over to Nagoya. Now, this will hurt our mid-game uh, science and culture for about five turns, but... On the turnaround, this city should be able to grow to a massive population once we get our hands on that aqueduct. In fact, I probably should have gone for the aqueduct first since the aqueduct boosts the military engineering technology. A little bit of a flub on my part, a little bit rusty because things have been so chaotic and I haven't really been playing much Civ. But there you have it. We're starting to warm up and we're starting to get back into things. We've got two very nice fishing boats in this city, which are supplying us with a ton of food in addition to the Ayufikul tile. Not going to really help us get the harbor any quicker, but maybe if they can work some of these tiles, we can get another builder over here. And there is the final settler. This settler is going to be popped down in the desert. It's not a very good spot to put it, but it might be able to cooperate and defend and just generally be useful. So I really, really, really want to build another district in here. We have the holy site. We have the government plaza. I'd love to build my temple and get my meeting house uh, because Islam has been spread to me. And I'm actually kind of okay with this. I do lose out on a lot of gold and a lot of food, but having access to the meeting house isn't a terrible one. In fact, it's probably the best one, so I might just let my religion die. And mainly I got the religion for, you know, the justification of building a bunch of holy sites and stuff like that for the era score, Didn't, which is going to result in a heroic age. And this is basically the last time we'll be able to get this particular heroic age. So if my religion dies, I don't actually mind that much. The real question is, do I go straight for the granary in order to be able to build my theater square quicker, or do I build the water mill, delay my theater square slightly, and have a better overall game? I think I'm going to go straight for the granary so that I can get my theater square up and running just that little bit quicker. It actually looks like there's a ton of open land down to the south that the AI is not taking advantage of. It's definitely making me feel a little bit unfairly boxed in here. But, you know, what can I do about it? I can't really reach that land with a settler in a reasonable amount of time and then actually secure it in a loyalty standpoint. So there's not much I can do about that. It's just basically open land that's kind of sitting down there and taunting me. We did, however, run into Bologna, who I'll be able to send an envoy to to get plus two science per turn. And that plus two science, it's not a huge amount, right? But it is a nice little boost that I would not have otherwise had. Um, now we're just getting an excessive amount of error score, probably completely unnecessary to get this much. But, you know... If you're going to win, win hard. Now, I could build my granary, my watermill, my shrines, all that stuff. Or I could start doing theater squares. 
This would significantly boost how quickly I get my great riders. So I want to get those filled as soon as possible to start generating tourism. So I'm going to make that move right now. I'm also going to declare friendship with people. And I'm pretty sure I'm very, very close to getting alliances in civil service. And I will be looking to get alliances with people. Something I could potentially do is build a couple of settlers in my, in my capital or something like that, or potentially even chop them out in Nagoya and get them in position along this coastline to maybe if I find a, a city worth settling. And then whoever I forward settled, just get a, a cultural alliance with them so that I don't suffer any loyalty pressure problems. And then, you know, Bob's your uncle. Similarly, in this city, we do have some inter interesting choices. We could go for the shrine. We could go for the granary. Now, if I went for the shrine, it would actually be allow me to use my faith to, you know, kind of retake my religion if I really want it. Like, it's not a terrible religion. I just don't know if it's worth it to go for it. Oh, my religion came back in my capital. Hmm, that's odd. Did I, I didn't do anything, right? No, I, I guess it just passively came back. There must be some sort of thing that I'm just not aware of. But anyway, my religion came back and I've got religious pressure, all that good stuff. I think what we're going to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think what we're going to do is we're going to try out going for the early theater square festivals. We're not going to like hardcore work them, but just a couple of extra ones here and there to get those great riders filling out those slots a little bit quicker. I think it's going to be well worth it. It's a little bit of an unorthodox strategy that I haven't done. Really, I've only ever done it once in a very pat particular uh, style of game that I was going for. It was, I think, I believe it was my Swedish speed run. Now, we did run into, uh, uh, I almost called him Aladdin. His name is Saladin. <laughs> it's not Aladdin. He is not Aladdin. Oh, God. Uh, petitioning mods to uh, make a Aladdin Arabia mod, please. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sell him all of my luxuries. I'm also going to sell him 20 of each of my strategic resources because I want to basically extract as much gold out of this guy as possible. So 20 of my uh, strategics and all three of my luxuries. And he will give me a grand total of a crap ton of money and diplomat diplomatic influence. In fact, I think he'll give me 13, no, 12, okay. So 31 gold per turn, 79 gold straight up. And if I throw in open borders, he might even, there we go. 79, uh, 78 gold, 31, right. So this is a great trade for me. These are things that I don't care about all that much because amenities aren't a big deal in the early game. They're a really big deal in the late game. But for the most part, you can kind of ignore them. I kind of wish I could get to down here to take that. But there's definitely coastal settlements here. If I can get a alliance with Greece, I think it's worth it to purchase a builder in here, chop both of these forests, make settlers. Yeah, I think, I think that's absolutely worth my time. So I'm going to cancel that harbor and get to work on settlers in here. It's going to be fairly slow because I don't have the government building in here, but that's not the end of the world. Not fully efficient, but still relatively efficient. The taxpayer. There's civil service. Let's go ahead and talk to Gorgo. Hi, Gorgo. Nice to meet you. How would you like a cultural alliance? Now, Gorgo is also a really good for a cultural alliance for another reason. It's because she generates a lot of culture. And with a high level of cultural alliance, you get a bunch of great person bonuses and extra culture and tourism from the person who is your cultural ally. So this is just going to end up making both of us way better at culture. Now, I, I could very much so see an argument for not getting a cultural alliance with her, but, but, but I'm going to try to like forward settle her here. So I think the cultural alliance really just kind of lends itself to that goal. The other thing that I need to get my hands on is uh, shipbuilding to actually be able to embark because right now my units can't embark and I'm going to need a swordsman to come down here and clear out this barb camp as well. There we go. Another city over here in Osaka. I could have used the settler four over here, but I'm going to purpose build some settlers for this. And I, and I wanted a guy over here, especially because I get my free builder. Well, quote unquote free. I did technically pay for it. But having Osaka here is just going to be nice as a sort of buffer zone over here with the Ottomans and the Sumerians. Did I just see a Turkish settler in the fog of war and then not try to steal it? Who, I, who is this? You're not potato. I will look elsewhere in the future. I'm sorry for forward settling you. Right, there is engineering. More importantly, there's access to the aqueduct, which is going to be a useful and helpful district in particular for building up this industrial zone that we have planned over here. There's our very first great rider. And so there are two great works of riding. Very happy about that. We've already started the tourism train in a 
pretty big way considering how early into the game it is. Now normally when there was a particular way we would have been about 12 turns from winning the game uh, with that particular sort of game that you could do. So we actually are super far behind where we could potentially be if we had managed to uh, get the right kind of map of the right civilization setup. Unfortunately we're not quite there. It's gonna be a long game. What's that? You've won a game in like 130 turns? Why, well, yes, I did. You look for my Swedish speedrun game that I did before. And I wasn't even that fast. Okay, the Ottomans have denounced me. This is important information um, because it means if I have military units, I'm going to want them towards the Ottomans. I have one over here. Let's get them moved into Osaka. And I have this one over here. Let's get them moved into Shizuoka. Hopefully, they don't declare war while I'm out in the open. Just so much open land down here by the Greeks. I think it might be worth it to, to keep just kind of sneak out settlers. There's our second great work. We're up to 20 tourism per turn. Not a huge amount, but every little bit matters. You can see we already have one out of 46 tourists unlocked. And we do need to meet every sieve in the game. Oh, we've already met every sieve in the game. So we're actually fine. We're Wait, have we? No, there's, there's one who's missing. Yeah, yeah. It's probably Korea. In fact... I'm going to make a bet right now that it's that it's, it's Korea's in this game. Just to make <clears throat> just to make my life as miserable as possible, I know for a fact that Korea is in this game. Like he was willing to offer me this deal, and now all of a sudden he's not willing to give me it. But six gold for these is fine, especially since he doesn't have any money. So I know he's not upgrading his army. We also just picked up machinery, which is quite nice. It means I have access to crossbowmen if I need them on the defense. Okayama has finished its granary. I'm going to go ahead and get the monument and then the harbor in here because trade routes are good and I like trade routes. Ooh, Mohenjo-Daro. Unfortunately, Mohenjo-Daro is in the process of getting murdered. I will not send them an envoy because, you know, th the whole getting murdered thing. But I wish them all the best and I kind of wish I had found them earlier. But, oh, we did run into Armagh. Now, this is someone I will send an envoy to. Plus two faith per turn. Not super useful, but for a single envoy, you can't really get much of a better deal. Now I do have the settler production card plugged in, so I'm going to go ahead and harvest this forest and this forest next turn. Thus grabbing myself a settler to send down here to forward settle the Greeks. I'm going to go ahead and vote for myself twice on this one again, because I have plenty of friends and stuff like that. They should, in theory, vote for me. Yep, there it is. They voted for me again. And scientific city-states actually passed, so trade routes with scientific city-states are going to be way more valuable. All right, water mill completed in Kyoto, and we can get to work on our uh, theater square. Unfortunately, it is going to have to cover up a really nice farm, but, you know, these are the sacrifices that you sometimes have to make. Although, I should probably get rid of some of these pins, because they're a little bit redundant, and I should definitely pre-place my aqueducts in preparation for the industrial zone that's going to be coming down in Nagoya once it is done making me a settler. Now the real question is, do we go for the second settler here? I have a settler ready to embark with shipbuilding. I have a swordsman down here ready to help clear out this barb camp. I might even send the second warrior. I know the Ottomans are looking for war, but I think I'll be fine. Famous last words, I'm going to cut to myself getting murdered if that happens. So it is a bit of a tough decision here. I've already invested a lot into the harbor, but uh, getting another settler would be a pretty big deal. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish the harbor in here. Getting even just one settler down here is pretty nice because when I get this golden age, I might be able to use this city down here to leapfrog and purchase even more settlers and just get a whole bunch of these coastal cities and maybe even work my way to the bottom half of the map, which will severely piss off Greece and everyone else. But I'm pretty confident if I get the military and the walls up, I should have no problem defending it. I had a huge brain fart and just completely forgot to get an alliance with Sumeria. And I'm definitely going to go for a, a research alliance with Sumeria. Just in case he's trading with me at all, it'll give me a bunch of tech. And I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I think we're well on our way to having a very interesting game. We've already been in two wars. We have identified a rather unique strategy of trying to settle around the coastline while trying to be friends with the Greeks. And, you know, just generally doing kind of some weird stuff with a lot of very interesting land that we're going to have to work our way around and a really active volcano that I'm hoping will erupt at least a few more times before the game is over. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.